All right, it is time for my weekly reading wrap up and TBR. Hey everyone, it is Shannon and I'm super excited to be here today and to share with you this video. This is going to be sort of how last week went for my reading, which was week 22, which was mostly May, um, but it was outside of the May reading challenge or it was after the four weeks of the May reading challenge. And then also what I plan to read this coming week, week 23, which is June. I don't have that calendar. I haven't flipped my calendar yet. I don't know. What is it today? The 4th <laughs> to the... 11th? <laughs> Something like that? <laughs> I do Sunday to Saturday for my reading. Um, anyway, so I'm tr also trying to figure out sort of like what videos I want to do now that the May reading challenge has has completed. And so I am trying, I'm finding my feet. So this will be a bit wonky. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to share how last week went and then some insights if I have any and then what I'm planning on reading. Um, and so let's just get this started because I don't know where it's going. So we might as well just start talking about the books. So one of the books that I finished, or one of the titles that I finished, I was very surprised that I finished, was The Prose Edda. So this is by Snorri Sturluson, or compiled by Snorri Sturluson. It is um, Norse mythology and stories, um, and it was nothing like what I expected. Um, I don't know if it was the edition that I had, which was like a one, like I got a six pack of, um, of different Norse tales, myths, you know, heroic poems, you know, Edda's. <laughs> um, and I, it just, it just wasn't what I expected. And I think it would have been much better to read something that had accompanying text and footnotes and introductions and stuff like that. And usually I don't like that. Usually I like to go to the source, but like this is from 1220. So, you know, having, you know, insight and context might have been helpful. And I just, I found it, it was really dry, which I was expecting, but it also, I didn't felt like it linked a lot of things together because I was reading it in ebook, which, and an ebook that had no indexing, I had no idea how long any of the things I was reading were going to be. If it was going to be like three flips on my Kindle or 30 and the, and it had the Kindle squish too. So like, I think my, my version said it was 129 pages, but I think it's closer to like 200 and like twice that. So anyway, and towards the end, this got very like, almost like a thesaurus, like how can we describe a whatever a king a king could be a blah a blah a blah a blah blah and had all these like you know synonyms synonyms for a king like a, like a thesaurus so it was not a favorite and I will continue to read Norse works and classics and you know um sagas and uh, heroic poems but I this I really thought this was going to be like you know where the gold was and not so but again I wrote I read it without context and I'm still trying to you know, understand the differences between the sagas and the heroic poems and the Eddas and you know and I, I guess it's one of those situations where in a lot of ways it is very helpful to read other people's reflections and translations and interpretations. Some of the stories I was very familiar with, um, some of the stories I was not, some of the characters I was very familiar with, some of the characters I was not, or, or people, characters, you know, it's a little, because it's mythology, some of it's mythology and some of it's history. It's, it's, um, it's, it was a challenging read. So, but I did finish it. It is one of the oldest books on my Goodreads TBR. It's a new edition this year because I added it in 20. 13. So how I do my oldest on my Goodreads TBR is every, it's anything that I added 10 or more years ago. And I did have a challenge when I was hitting my 10 year Goodreads anniversary that I wanted to read everything that I added from day one. So that was the challenge for that year. And then the year after that, I added all of the titles that I added that first year. And then since then, I just add all of the titles from the previous year. So anything 10 years or older on my Goodreads TBR is the old song my Goodreads TBR. So it's a bit of a fluid list that changes every year and it changed a lot this year. And next year it has so many more titles because I started my Shannon Reads Those Books exploration. So it's just exploding. So I have made very little progress on, on this challenge. Um, but one of the reasons is because I have so many challenges. That's something I think I need to reflect on later. Um, and I might do a video at some point about that um, because I, I don't mind having tons of challenges, but I feel like if I'm making like 1% <laughs> 
um, like progress per year. I mean, like, would it be better to have less challenges? I don't know. I think this year is going to be a year of sort of like refining what is important to me in reading. Um, but I think that's going to be quite uh, something to think about over time. And I'm not really sure <laughs> where that will go. So but I, you know, I hit a lot of challenges with that title. Um, it was translated. Oh, I forgot to include that it was translated. I'm assuming it was translated. Was there? There must have been. Tra I have to add that. I have to add that to my goals. So I get two more goals because I read that. And then the, the there was a title after it in the bind up that was only for four pages, the sea fight or something, but I couldn't even find it on Goodreads. So now my Goodreads and my spreadsheet won't match. Yay. Anyway, but I finished it and I'm really happy that I did that. And I think the next step is to actually there's one more in this bind up that I haven't read that is either translated or uh, I might have been translated by William Morris. And I think I read one of his translations of something else. That was excellent. So I think that will be the next, but I don't know when I'm getting to it because, and we'll get to that <laughs> as we get to that. So I finished that. I also finished Wild Wolf Claiming by Rhiannon Bird. This is the eighth in the Bloodrunner series. It is a paranormal romance. There is a ninth title. I did look it up and I, what, as I was reading this, to me, it became very clear what the ninth title would be because this follows a couple, a male, it's a male female romance and it, it uh, there is the, the woman's friend and the guy's friend. So it's clear. I knew that that ninth book would definitely be about that. I am going to consider this series complete at this one because the, the eight I've read were all under Harlequin Nocturne and the ninth is, um, was published after it was completed, um, like after they retired Nocturne. Um, and this wasn't a favorite for me. And I think I was clear about that probably last week or whenever I talked about it before. I'm not as in, I don't like as paranormal romance as much as I did. There is so much suspense. Um, that that I find sometimes uncomfortable and violence and, and this there was someone after the woman and and the I didn't love the couple like they just they didn't communicate very well and they were very hesitant about sharing their past and they, they both had quite tragic past and to be honest it was a bit heavy um, in terms of when they did share and disturbing and so I feel like for me this really like I started reading the series like in 2014 and I read most of it 2014, 2015. And it really was sort of more representative of the, the types of um, paranormal romances that I was reading then. And I think now I enjoy urban fantasy a lot better where it often has um, like female leads and they are, you know, um, skilled and they are part of the paranormal or supernatural world and you know they are the driving force of the story and there's a big arc story as opposed to paranormal romance is mostly about the couple and it's a different couple per book and that can be great too but I think for me urban fantasy has a stronger draw than paranormal romance I still imagine I will read both <laughs> but this just lets me know like this is more of what I read when I was getting into the genre and now I have a more a different idea of what I really enjoy so I'm actually considering this a series complete at eight um, uh, because and I actually will say that I wasn't thrilled that I did feel like the plot of this story. So there's like the romance arc was was complete, but I felt like the plot of the story wasn't quite pulled together like at the end because and that's how I knew that there was going to be another book because I imagine it it explains or it continues. But I really felt like there was going to be one more big conflict. I don't feel like the plot conflict was resolved. So anyway, that's okay. I'm considering it complete. It's an owned unread book um, because I had this, I actually got it. I did the, not the rewards, but I did the subscription, the free trial for the, the Nocturne, but then, and then they closed down the Nocturne. So anyway, I read it, go me. And in terms of visual works, I was actually thrilled. This is a completely different tonally. I actually read another volume of A Man and His Cat. This is a manga. I believe I read the first one for Dai's um, Monochrome Manga Club. Um, and I love this I just, for me, this is so tender hearted. It's about a man who adopts a cat and it's very sweet, but it's also, especially this volume in particular, I also felt it was quite emotional. Like there was some moments in there that were like, you know, I was really feeling like there were lots of feels like, and there's lots of cute stuff with the cat and the man and his cat, but he also has, 
you know, as the volumes go on, we start to learn about his life and his past and stuff like that. And, you know, this one, <laughs> I'm not going to lie, it got me. So I'm going to continue that. When I started reading that, my, my library only had um, one through three or one through four. And now I think they have one through five or seven. So I'm going to keep reading that. It's been nice. I've, I've been looking for sort of like a lighter um, manga to read since the last one I wrote was Hard Boiled Cop and Dolphin and that was not really light like it was kind of humor but it wasn't very light but this one it's not light it's but there's su some of the moments are super cute and um and so I I like that having that energy I also read a new one to me so this one is um Yusotoki R Rhetoric I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right Yusotoki Rhetoric all of the information authors translators will always be down below um so this was just a random pickup uh so it's a manga it was a random pickup from the library I do an A to Z manga challenge every year so this one I got you um for it and um this is a historical um and it follows a girl or she's I think she's like seven she's 16 but it's because of it's, it's historical although she's young she's sort of more like she's on her own and um, she she can tell when people are lying and so she that can unnerve some people so she's trying to find her way in the world and she finds someone who's like a detective or a private investigator type person and they sort of team up um, like he sort of takes her under his wing she needs somewhere to go she's on her own she's 16 you know, and she doesn't want to tell people that she can hear if they're lying or tell if they're lying. And so anyway, so they, they, they her and the detective guy, I guess he's more of a PI, I can't remember. And honestly, the title is something completely different on Goodreads. Like it's like paranormal investigation, don't lie to me or something. <laughs> and it was not terribly easy to find. So anyway, but it is the same one. Um, but this and I think it's 10 volumes. And I think it's complete. But my library, I don't think it has it just says one and two. Anyway, but she sort of like falls into um, they they sort of stumble on a bit of a mystery. And then they sort of decide to team up. I thought it was pretty good and I, I enjoyed it and I will keep reading it. Um, I am a little concerned. It does. I think it's a shoujo. So I think it end up will end up being a romance, which I'm a little disappointed in because I like, why can't they just work together? But that's just me. I didn't know it was a shoujo going in. If I if I'd known that, I probably would have known. But I consider it so far as a bit more of a historical. I don't know how much I would consider it a full on mystery, uh, because I don't know if there's enough clues to be able to figure it out. Um, and then the also the PI is very um, good at interpreting like body language and stuff like that. So he can also you know, usually figure out if people are lying too, but she can tell paranormally or something like it's not explained how she can tell. Anyway, it was interesting. I will continue to read it. The next one is not on, um, the next one is on hold. So I went back to a man and his cat. <laughs> and then I think the next one for me, that is on hold. So I had to pick something else to keep on going. So that's sort of some of the stuff that I, um, finished. Um, I feel like, man, I feel like I have to choose either discussing sort of like how I'm creating my TBR or I can sh share with you what my TBR is. I feel like the video will be too long if I do both of those things, um, which was my plan. Maybe I'll try and just be really succinct with how I'm trying to create my TBR because I've been reflecting on how okay so now we go to insights insights imagine some kind of fade or something insights <laughs> okay yeah I don't do editing and, and unless I do vlogs I miss doing vlogs like, like vlog vlogs one day um I'm just getting back to actually filming so that's just where I am now anyway so insights for the week is I'm you know it, because it's a sort of transition week between the months and the, the challenge the currently reading challenge has come together or has finished I've been trying to think of like where do I want to go from here what do I want to focus on and like with the currently reading like it's the the goal is very clear is to reduce the number of pages but now that it's done I feel like one of the things that I'm I'm, I'm trying to figure out is how and when do I I start new things and, and should I at all um, but I am aware of the fact that if I try and maintain the pace and the goal and the, the emphasis from May it's not going to be successful one of the reasons it's successful is is for a contained period of time I can resist not starting new things for a contained period of time but if I try and do that forever 
it's not going to be successful and then I'm going to start a, a million things. This is just for me, a pa like uh, it's a little strong to say it's a pattern, but I think it's just uh, like a pattern of behavior, right? You try and restrain too much for too long. Then when you have the opportunity, you may over, um, you know, uh, it, um, I don't know do too much so I just think so there's I'm trying to feel like what is a good way to start new things now my previous TBR is like sort of earlier this year and late last year what I did was I always picked one title to finish one title to start and three three to continue and those are my five picks for the week and I think that that has been successful and sometimes it did end up starting more than one thing often because an extra hold came a hold came in from the library or, or something like that um, and that's got me thinking about how like the using the library I love the library but sometimes when things are really popular and like I can't get if I don't finish it and I can't get the book again for months it's like it's really frustrating <laughs> but you know anyway so that's that's a whole that could be its whole other thing so I don't know so I feel like I haven't said anything <laughs> in this insight section um but I think one of the ideas I came up with was I do also like to really work with the sort of big bucket genres that I know are the important ones for me one is speculative fiction so urban fantasy fantasy science fiction and speculative fiction and then romance yeah, that's pretty self-explanatory. And then my everything else, which is literary, contemporary, you know, and then any genres that aren't speculative or romance, like like Western or mystery, um, where there's where they're in the set in the realistic fiction, I guess you could say. And then the other one is nonfiction. Um, and uh, those are sort of the four big buckets of works that I like to read from and are usually stuff that takes more than one week to finish. I also love kids books, manga, comics, graphic novels. Those I tend to start and finish within a week or two. So I'm not as concerned about those for like the currently reading and my numbers and stuff like that. You know, often at the end of the week, I do have one or two that I'm carrying over. I finish them by the middle of the week and then I have another one or two and I've looked back on my uh, records because um, of course I keep records. <laughs> I have a I have a tab on my spreadsheet called carryover and throughout this year I generally have one or two titles that carry over week to week um, and one is like the one new title that I picked and the second is often a manga or comic not a kid's book usually other than Benicula that was a that was a bit of an oddity for a 120 page kid's book to get carried over for several weeks and making it into the TBR jars but you know it can happen it can happen so anyway so I'm trying to figure out what to do and I did even in my reading journal I did create different um I, oh I might not have completely updated this I actually did break down my currently reading by the different categories so I have these are the speculative fiction that were on my currently reading as of the beginning of May so I think it was eight and I only finished The Demon Soul, so I have eight. And then for Romance, I had five titles, and I finished three. And so now I only have two on my currently reading. And then for Everything Else, which I think I put Realistic, Literary, Classics, Contemporary. Actually, this was, I thought it would be more. But it was six titles and I finished three, but like, you know, one was Benicula and one was a Nancy Drew um, and then the prose Edda. And then for nonfiction, ten. No finishes. The highlighted is ones that are finishes, but ten and no finishes. So one of the ideas I've been playing with is that I feel like maybe... This would be a good case to use the sort of finish two before starting one. So obviously no nonfiction starts. Uh, and then if I followed that rule, no speculative fiction starts because I still have seven to choose from and I only finished one. And then ro both romance and realistic fiction had three finishes. I wouldn't have thought. So those are both categories that are open that I can start something new. 
Now, I don't know how I feel about the finish two before start one. I don't know how successful that will be, but I feel like it's something to work with. And so I think that's sort of what I've decided what what to try. The um, the exception to the rule will be for buddy reads. When I do buddy reading, I'm not going to worry about that. I actually consider buddy reads their own category. So I have those four categories, speculative fiction, romance, realistic fiction, nonfiction, buddy reads, and then, and then visual kids and manga. Well, manga is visual, but like comics and graphic novels, manga and kids books. And those are sort of like my eight overall categories. Um, and then there's always one that's other. So I think that's what I'm going to work with. Finish if Once I finish two, I can start one. And I actually was pretty happy when I looked at it and I realized I actually am at choice here. I can choose to finish, to start a romance, or I can choose to start a uh, realistic fiction. So it did, t I, I felt like one of the challenges I have is I don't want to spend too much time thinking and planning about my reading, but I also want to do have a system that's successful. And when you're starting something, you're trying things out, there is a lot of thinking. So at least for me, <laughs> but I can get into that analysis paralysis stage, but I think I'm going to try this finish two before I can start one. Oh, and I forgot to, I forgot to show, I also did make a list of like, t like a TBR list of things that I want to try and read and so I did actually with speculative fiction I actually broke out and put urban fantasy separate and then speculative fiction so there is a lot <laughs> that I want to read there and then with romance is wasn't what is in as many and then non I, I literary and classics ended up being a lot but that's because I felt like I I had almost none I had like two and then I looked at all my bookshelves. I had two from my goals. And I don't know how I feel about putting kids books, like 100 to 200 page kids books there. I don't know. And then nonfiction was actually very, very short. So maybe it's okay I haven't finished anything yet. I do know I want to read the All Creatures Great and Small, um, the next one in that series. But I haven't watched the season three finale. <laughs> so I need to do that first. Um, so maybe I should put that on my, my TBR this week as other. I actually should because it is, I do feel like it's holding me back a little bit. And um, yeah, so that's sort of what I'm working with this week. That's what I'm sort of working with as an idea. Let me know what you think about that. Have you ever tried that? Like finish two and then start one? Like it is a very like slow but steady way to make progress on anything, whether it's reading, whether it's, you know, if you feel like you're watching too many shows or you feel like you... I don't know. I can't like have, I don't know. I can't think of other things, but I think it's a pretty standard way of like trying to very, I was going to say monotonously, realistically reduce something. I don't know. I'm going to try it. I don't, if it's, it, it's a little fussy, it's a little fussy, but we're, I'm going to try it and we're going to see how things go. So I have created my TBR for the week. It took me a little while to sort of figure out what to work with because I do still want to work with one work one work to finish one work to start three to continue and then also have one per those categories I like one speculative fiction one romance one realistic work and one nonfiction and the fifth slot can either be a buddy read or an additional nonfiction I think that's going to work for me I'm going to that's that's I've been sort of kind of working with anyway I don't always have the one per category. It is a little tough to have five categories and two sets of parameters it needs to fit. It's That's a little fussy, but I'm going to try it and see how it goes. I've been sort of doing it anyway, so we'll see. Anyway, so what I have chosen to read this week, so my TBR for week 23, my title to finish is House of Many Ways by Diane Wynne-Jones. This is the fifth, sorry, third and final book in the Howl's Moving Castle series. I did read this last week. I read a fair amount of it. I only have 50 pages left, so that's really great. I, I do feel like there was a quite a span of time in between the last time I read it and now, and I am feeling like I'm missing a link. There's one sort of character group that I'm like, I don't understand why there's so much concern here, so... I kind of, so anyway, that happens when there's months between reading, but I am sure I will figure it out. Um, and uh, yeah, so I, I don't love the protagonist in this one, I'll be honest. 
<laughs> but um, I do, I, I am enjoying the story more than I expected. It's a kid's fantasy series, and um, there's some interesting characters in this one. So 50 pages to go, so I'm feeling pretty confident that I will be able to finish that. In terms of my start this week, my options were a romance or a literary fiction, or realistic fiction, whatever. So I actually opted for romance, and I'm going with Loving the Beast by Sky Warren. This is the fifth and final title in the beauty series. It's actually noted here, the beauty epilogue. So these are, uh, and they're a set of novellas. I actually think some of them were short enough to almost be short stories. This one's a bit longer than I expected. I thought for some reason it was 40 pages, but it's more like 100. Um, and I, I'm not a huge fan a fan of the series, to be honest. Um, it's a contemporary series. It's an erotica series. It's very racy. And um, and so, but I do like to finish series. And given it's only around 100 pages, I think I can do it. Um, and uh, yeah, it's a sort of Beauty and the Beast retelling. He is a professor who has um, a lot of scarring due to being in the military. And he has made himself a bit of a recluse outside doing professor work. And she is a student who ends up, she knows him because she ends up being his maid. So that's the sort of Beauty and the Beast thing. I actually did not even pick up on the Beauty and the Beast thing until like, I think I was reading the second one and I read someone else's description. And I was like, wow, because I just, I actually don't really like uh, fairy tale retellings. So anyway, this one is quite racy. So note that if you're going to give it a shot. Um, and um, yeah, so that is going to be my new one for the week. I also am going to, for my literary type work, I'm going to go back to reading A Just of God by Margaret Lawrence. This I started very early, I think week two of the year, and I haven't picked it up recently. I only have about 100 pages left. It's actually quite short. It's very good. I love Margaret Lawrence's works, um, and I'm reading all, this is the second in the Manawaka uh, sequence. Um, last year I read The Stone Angel, which was just, wow. <laughs> it's very powerful, emotional Canadian fiction. And so um, I would like to finish it. I have about 100 pages left. It's not going to be this week, but I think I can make some good progress. In terms of nonfiction, I was thrilled to see that my hold came in for Madly Deeply, The Alan Rickman Diaries. Um, I have really enjoyed reading this. I did read it a little bit throughout the Currently Reading Challenge because my library hold came in um, and it didn't, it never got picked. And I'm like, this, this, it took months for the hold to come in. Um, I read it in January and then it was waiting and waiting and waiting. So I'm actually surprised I was able to read it in May and then it came back again in June, but I'm thrilled. So hopefully I'll make some big progress. I'm sure Alan Rickman, people know who he is. He is an actor. He was in uh, the HP films as, um, <laughs> say Slytherin what is his character name Snape <laughs> of course and of course he was in Die Hard um and these really are like sometimes literally like bullet point type thoughts of um you know th I'm in 1996 at the moment so it's pre uh HP but I do feel like um but after Die Hard, and he's currently working on a couple of films and wrapped up a couple of films that I actually haven't seen. Um, one of them is, oh, it's like, was he in Sense and Sensibility? I still haven't read that. Um, but um, yeah, so he, and Kate Winslet was in that. I think he talked about that. So I, for me, I love love, love memoirs about the performing arts and the process and acting. And he's such an insightful person in terms of the process and acting and art and life. And they, but sometimes the diaries really are very sort of point form or just like random thoughts or like one or two thoughts about a film he saw or how the day went. And I, I actually love that. I love it. I'm so I'm really enjoying it. And then the second nonfiction that I'm going to work on this week is mammals. I've been reading this pretty consistently and I'm at less than 100 pages and I finished out this there was seals uh, big cats and then I think I'm actually still reading about seals I do want to know that there are I think there are five big cats so that's another thing that I want to know a bit more about there's lots of I'm like oh the cat section was just it was so great it was so great and then in terms of like visual works and kids books and stuff I'm reading unicorn playlist by uh Dana, oh, I don't know if it's Dana or Dana Simpson, uh, Simpson, yeah, Simpson, which is uh, the Phoebe and her unicorn series, and I love this series, it's about a girl whose best friend is a unicorn, like, it's a great kids comic 
series. So some of them are graphic novels, but most of them are comics. I also am getting back to Yusagi Yohimbo with volume 26, Traders of the Earth, created uh, by Stan Sakai. I love the series. I'm actually kind of worried because I think I'm getting close to the end and I have enjoyed it so much that I don't really want it to end, but it is great. And a new manga that I picked up um, uh, from the library is called Wand Dance, um, and it's about a high schooler, I think a high schooler, they say like year one, year two and stuff so I think it's high school that a boy who or guy who joins the dance club so it's really interesting I can't remember if I mentioned this one before um but um my the volume two my hold just came in for that so that's one of the ones that I am reading and I'm looking forward to reading the next one because now my holds are sort of like all over like in terms of reading that and y y Yutasoki rhetoric and a man and his cat so <laughs> Very different tones, but I actually, they're also quite lovely. So anyway, wow, that is that got to be a bit of a long-winded video. Um, I don't know if I should separate out my TBRs to my weekly reading challenge uh, or my weekly update. Or maybe I should take away the insights. That's one of my, I like talking about that part, but it's a little, a little all over this week. Anyway, so that's how my reading has been going and what's been on my mind. I am still processing a lot of how the currently reading challenge went and what I want to do going forward. I've already talked about that a little bit. I probably will do a reflection video, not this week, but next week. And then maybe do a video about sort of like what my ultimate currently reading goal is like what I want because I do have a very fixed goal in my mind which I don't know if that's good or bad and I don't know whether I want to really work towards that um but I feel like that I feel like I need I feel like I should try because it's been on my mind for a long time and if I don't work towards it I won't know and then if I don't work towards it and then use that system I won't know if it works until I try it. So I think that's going to be sort of like my goal to sort of frame my reading for the rest of the year is trying to work towards this sort of like ultimate currently reading. I don't know. Anyway, so that's what I'm hoping for this week in terms of other videos going up. I am going to do, my plan is to do another video about how my film watching experience and goals is going. I did do my film goals for the year last week and I that was really great to do. And I have watched the movie. So I'm looking forward to sitting down and chatting about them and seeing how that goes that'll be another rambly probably long video because I don't <laughs> I'm doing my best to sort of figure out what kind of videos I want to do now so thank you so much for watching I haven't done a video this long in so long um so maybe I do need to split out my TBR I will think about that let me know your thoughts do long videos with both things together the wrap-up of the week and the TBR or would you prefer two shorter videos let me know your thoughts I hope your reading and your week is going well and I'll be back with another video soon thank you so much for watching